Hi everybody. This is going to be my first video in a series of videos presenting what I believe are the most compelling arguments for the existence of God. This video is going to be taking a new look at the ontological argument, an argument that in my opinion has been perhaps the most poorly formulated argument in the history of theism. But also, when properly formulated and understood, is perhaps the most powerful argument for God's existence. Now before we begin, let me say some things to those who have never heard of the ontological argument before. The ontological argument tries to prove that the most perfect thinkable being must really exist. Another way to say it is that the greatest conceivable existing thing must really exist. Now it equates this being with God for this reason. Thinking of a being greater than God is impossible by definition because God is supposed to be a being of infinite greatness. So if you can think of a being greater than God, then you're thinking of God, apparently, meaning that your concept of God is simply too small. Therefore, if it can be shown that the greatest conceivable being must really exist, then God must really exist. Now if that makes you scratch your head, uh, get ready and pay close attention, because this argument tends to give people a headache. Also, I'll put more detail in, this, in the description box of this video for those who are interested. The argument begins like this. Non-being cannot be. I'll say that again. Non-being cannot be. Or in other words, nothing cannot exist. Likewise, the reverse statement is also true. Being cannot not be. Or in other words, something cannot not exist. Now in support of this premise, it should be observed that the concepts of something and nothing are mutually exclusive reciprocal concepts. That is, they define one another. Something is defined as not nothing. And nothing is defined as not something. So you see, the concept of nothing existing is a false concept by definition. It's just like the concept of a married bachelor. To say the words, nothing exists, is to literally speak nonsense, because if nothing existed, it would not be nothing. It would be something. Therefore, nothing certainly cannot exist. But if that is the case, then that means that the reverse statement is just as certainly true. If nothing cannot be, then something must be. So something exists necessarily. From the first premise, it necessarily follows that if non-being cannot be, then it cannot be conceived. That is, it cannot be thought. This means that we cannot conceive of non-being possibly being at any time or in any place, or in any reality, or in any way whatsoever. Likewise, we cannot conceive of being possibly not being at any time, in any place, in any reality, or in any way whatsoever. Therefore, something must be conceived to exist at all times, in all places, in all realities, and it cannot be conceived to not exist at all. In other words, it is infinite being, pure, unlimited being. Therefore, it is the greatest conceivable being, and its non-being, that is, its non-existence, is inconceivable. Therefore, we have no choice but to conclude that the greatest conceivable being really exists, 
due to the impossibility of conceiving that it might not exist. That is the argument. Now, there are only two ways to avoid the conclusion, God exists. Either we must deny that this argument succeeds in proving the real existence of the greatest conceivable being, or we must accept the existence of such a being, but deny that it is equivalent to God. So now I would like to look at the most common form of both of these objections one at a time.